The Tao teaches us about um, how to think, how to think differently. First of all, it teaches us how to think in a, in a way that is in harmony um, with nature, with God, with spirit, that you can find great wisdom in just how, how important something like water is or how important it is to uh, observe the, uh, the way that uh, creation takes place. Uh, you can learn a lot, he said, from, from just a simple spider uh, and noticing that a spider builds a web from a pattern that comes from within itself and in the process of doing so it allows uh, whatever it is that comes to it to land there and it isn't concerned with what doesn't come its way. The Tao says that um, we don't need to be in competition, we don't need to be anxious, we don't need to be fearful, we don't need to live lives of hatred, of revenge. He lived at a time of the warring states and was trying to teach people how to find peace when all around you want to, are, are consumed with killing each other and hurting each other and hating each other. And so he asked us to look deep within ourselves and to find our own nature. And that's the second thing he said is that everything has a nature, including you, and that you should abandon the idea that you are disconnected from, from that nature, from that divine place from which you came. So what it does, what the Tao has done, what I have tried to do and change your thoughts, change your life, is to teach people that uh, no matter how you look at it, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. And that was going to be the original title for this book. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. It was just a little too long. So I came down to change your thoughts, change your life. Instead of thinking rigid thoughts, instead of thinking uh, hard thoughts, uh, think soft thoughts. And, and look, for, look for something like water and how water behaves. Why is the ocean, he said, the most powerful force in the universe? It's the most powerful force because it stays low because it is humble and allows everything to come to it. The Tao says the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And that single step, what he's teaching us is to think small, to think about what you can do in this moment rather than thinking big and then getting yourself consumed with never accomplishing anything. It teaches us to be content. It teaches us to be soft. It teaches us to be flexible. It teaches us to have an appreciation and an awareness that the Tao is in every single one of us and every human being that you encounter and every being that you encounter and every plant and every animal and every tree that you encounter has the unfolding of God built into it. Find that truth. Find that truth within yourself. Look to your own nature. Discover that and you'll have the greatest sense of peace you'll ever have. And I spent one entire year working on this book, living it, practicing it, and I've never been more peaceful, more joyful, and more in a, more a sense of aliveness of why I'm here and what I'm doing here. I don't question any of it. I just live in harmony with what Lao Tzu called the Great Tao. And the opening line of the Tao says, the Tao that can be named is not the Tao. You can't put a name on it. All you can do is feel it in your heart. I have now finished 67 verses of the Tao and I've written 67 essays on when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And this isn't just a clever play on words here. This is a quantum truth. As my friend Deepak Chopra has often said to me, quantum physics is not only stranger than you think it is, it's stranger than you can think. So that if you look at your origination, the place that you came from, this thing that uh, Lao Tzu called the Tao, this great source that is everywhere, there is no place that it is not. And yet it is doing nothing. And yet it leaves nothing undone. If you go out and just go for a walk this afternoon when you get home, just look at the perfection of all that is. Just look at the clouds and look at the sky and look at the ocean and look at the trees and look at the leaves and even more important, look at the space between the leaves and look at the invisibleness and the perfection of how everything is. There's a constancy, if you will. And this constancy is always there.